All right, here we go with chapter seven, which is police corruption and responses. Um, we're all very familiar with the concept of police corruption. Um, this is ultimately when a police officer does something to violate the trust of uh, the community uh, by way of doing something uh, unethical, immoral, illegal, um, under the guise of being a police officer. And does this happen every single day? Yes. Does it happen in every single department? Probably. Um, has it happened in Fresno? Absolutely, positively. Um, I can remember two very specific, pretty, pretty serious events uh, during during my lifetime that I remember that were highly pub publicized in Fresno. And one, of course, was uh, the um, deputy chief um, who was arrested for federal drug charges. Uh, he ended up going to federal prison for selling uh, narcotics, uh, heroin, marijuana, oxycontin, um, and he ultimately ended up in federal prison for, I think, about three and a half, four years. Um, of course, his name is, um, it'll come to me in the middle of this lecture, I'm sure. So his name is is not, uh, I cannot remember his name at this very moment. But um, anyways, Keith Foster. There you go, Keith Foster. Uh, he also, interestingly, was a, an adjunct um, instructor over at Clovis Community College uh, at the time. So he, uh, that so that was probably... Oh, five years ago, um, police corruption, obviously. And then uh, I also remember there was a um, police officer who also happened to be, um, gosh, what do they call a chaplain, I, I believe, with the Fresno Police Department. And he ultimately, while on duty and in uniform, uh, murdered his wife's lover. Uh, bizarre, interesting, crazy. Um, and he... I think he recently got out of prison. Uh, that was quite some time ago, probably 20, 25 years ago. Uh, but uh, obviously there are so many different uh, examples of police corruption and different ways that police officers can be uh, corrupt, um, economic corruption and abuse of authority. We're going to talk all about that uh, fun stuff. In <laughs> It's not fun. That's called sarcasm, guys. So anyways, hopefully you... Um, have listened to enough of my ridiculous lectures that you can um, understand my sick sense of humor and my sarcastic sense of humor by now. And um, yeah, these are really depressing subjects, but you know, so true and so prevalent, unfortunately, in our society, not just with police, but of course it becomes a lot more disturbing when it is uh, dealing with police. So some of you have probably heard uh, the name Serpico before um, this 1973 Knapp Commission that they're there that the book mentions um, that happened in in New York City uh, is in regards to this police officer who was named Frank Serpico. Uh, he ultimately was shot, um, and it it sounds like he was shot as a result of basically some whistleblowing that he was doing on some other police officers in the New York City Police Department uh, because of their alleged corruption, which was probably more than alleged. And it it turned into this huge uh, 1973 Knapp Commission. Um, this group was formed um, in order to investigate the um, allegations and the what what further what ultimately turned into um, a, quite an investigation of uh, rampant um, corruption in the uh, New York City Police Department. Um, and they're talking about things like gratuities. I know we talked about this uh, in our discussion question a couple weeks ago. Things like getting a cup of coffee free. I know, it doesn't seem like a big deal. Um, uh, things like kickbacks. Um, hey, if you come and, um, and drive by my store a certain number of times a day, I'll give you money. Uh, overtime schemes and misuse of department property. Um, and this could be many different things. Um, you could be looking people up on your computer system that you're not supposed to. You could be um, uh, wearing your uniform and doing overtime at a, a nightclub. All kinds of stuff, economic corruption. 
um, payoffs, ticket fixing, and ticket fixing is typically when someone uh, got a ticket, ticket's already been written, and then the police officer somehow, some way makes that ticket disappear. Bribery or extortion, um, people do, uh, there are, you know, bribes that take place. Um, you know, if you do this, then this won't happen. Uh, theft. Um, I mentioned the case of the um, fancy restaurant where uh, the door back door was left open and the police officer uh, suddenly had extra steaks and lobsters in his home freezer. Yes, uh, that stuff does happen. Those are also examples of economic corruption. Can police officers, you know, maybe they maybe they come across a uh, a, a suspect that has ten thousand dollars in his wallet when they book him into jail, and suddenly, uh, when he's released from jail, his property only has five thousand dollars. Where did that money go? Who knows? Was it the police officer? Which police officer? Was it the booking officer in the jail? Was it the uh, the property um, agent at the jail? Who knows? So um, yeah, does does stuff like that happen? Of course. Okay, gratuities. So this is one of those things that we already kind of talked about in our um, in our discussion questions. So these are <laughs> those things like discounts, like free coffee, like half price dry cleaning. Every time I go to the dry cleaners which during uh, the pandemic hasn't been that frequently. So you guys don't forget your dry cleaners if you actually use dry cleaners. Uh, they are, um, they're dying, uh, going out of business and stuff too. Um, do they get discounts? If they do, should, should the police officers get discounts? And in your responses to that discussion questions, in general, a lot of you said, why not? And I, I totally get where you're coming from. It doesn't seem like a big deal. But you all have lived long enough to understand that most things in life don't come free. And a lot of times, if someone gives you something, they want something in return. And sometimes it really is truly out of the goodness of some, uh, the yeah the goodness of someone's heart. But you know what? Not usually. And you know, if something happens. And the guy who gives you free coffee every single day does something shady. Do you think he's going to want you to look the other way? Of course he is. is does he expect that you're going to go and uh, that you're going to um, patrol his coffee shop more frequently than the other coffee shops? There's always something more to it. So it's always just cleaner and easier to not accept the gratuities. As a police officer, you shouldn't be accepting any gratuities from anyone. It becomes a conflict of interest. And again, does it seem like a big deal? No, it doesn't. But can it turn into a big deal? Absolutely, positively, yes, it can. Um, so there are very there are a lot of people that will try and give you free stuff. And I'll be honest, um, as a probation officer, if I had my gear on. Every time I went to Chipotle or I want to say Chick-fil-A too, they would try and give me a discount and they would refuse to not, I mean, I would say, no, 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 please charge me full price. They wouldn't. So I would put money in the tip jar in the amount of whatever uh, the remainder of, of the cost was. So if they gave me 50% discount, I would put the remainder in the tip jar. Uh, I would refuse the gratuity. Um, I, I didn't want to be rude. Um, I certainly didn't want to be disrespectful. I was always super kind, always said, I really appreciate you. I thank you so much for the gesture. You know, I just, I just can't accept it. Um, and, um, I would always do it in a very kind and, and respectful manner, but, uh, it, it, nothing is free in this life. You, you all know that. I know you know that. Uh, graft is an exploitations of, of one's role, uh, like um, accepting bribes or protection money. Uh, example, um, taking bribes for changing testimony or forgetting. Um, you know, maybe um, you pay an officer $10,000 to forget something. Do you think that ever happens? Sure it does. If an officer has a sick kid. 
Um, if an officer is a chronic gambler, um, if an officer is in debt, do they get desperate sometimes? It certainly can happen. Officers in the United States rated bribery as the second most serious offense. Only second to theft. Abuse of authority. Of course, there can be physical abuse, psychological abuse, and legal abuse. Professional courtesy and ticket fixing. Uh, this is one of those questions they're going to ask you probably when you are uh, being interviewed for a job. Uh, you pulled your mother over uh, for speeding. Are you going to give her a ticket? Hmm. Right? Are you? You pull another officer over. Are you going to give the officer a ticket? Yeah. You kind of have to. Uh, I remember um, being a probation officer, and uh, I was talking to my dad, who was a cop, and I told him, oh, God, Dad, I got a, I got a speeding ticket today. And he looked at me like I was insane, and I was like, what? He'd say, why didn't you flash your badge, my probation officer badge? And I looked at him, like, because I didn't want to get fired. And he said, they wouldn't have given you a ticket if they knew you were a probation officer. So, <laughs> again, that's another one of those things. A lot of people would put their driver's license in with their wallet badge. Um, and our department specifically asked us not to do that and specifically advised us, do not flash your badge when you get pulled over for speeding, you know, uh, rolling a, a, you know, rolling a, a stop, any of that kind of stuff. If you ever get stopped by a cop, don't say, do you know who I am? Or do you know who I work for? Um, my dad was horrified that I did not show my badge. Um, I would rather pay the ticket do traffic school, whatever I had to do, then potentially lose my job for saying, do you know who I am? So another thing just to think about, um, I, I tend to speed, so I would tend to get speeding tickets. And that was just unfortunately something that, um, you know, could I have gotten out of those by flashing my badge? Probably, especially since Fresno PD, uh, which is, I live in the city of Fresno and I drive in the city of Fresno and Fresno County Probation, we actually work together quite frequently, um, but it wasn't worth it. So anyways, professional courtesy is um, something that uh, can be very messy, very messy. So again, something else to consider and think about before you get into the field, because these situations will occur. You will pull someone over who is the judge's son, who is a, a cop's wife, who is, you know, somebody's something, and uh, it will become uncomfortable and you have to be ready to deal with those situations and understand that ethically you have a responsibility. Um, on duty use of drugs and alcohol, that's a significant problem, right? I don't really think a whole heck of a lot needs to be said more than that. Drugs and alcohol while you're carrying a firearm are not a good idea. And it can really cause significant problems. Okay. <laughs> Sexual misconduct, again, significant problem. If an officer is trying to uh, gain sex or tell us, you know, pull a woman over and tell her, if you uh, give me a blow job, I will not give you this ticket. Yeah, that's a problem. And does it happen? Yes, it does. Okay, uh, strip searches, things like that, those should never happen anywhere except for in a jail uh, by a person of the same gender. Okay, yeah, so uh, these are again, things that unfortunately do happen. Um, who is, who is most vulnerable of these types of things. And unfortunately this stuff does absolutely happen. Um, are there criminal police officers? What do you think? <laughs> I think you all know this, um, cause we all watched, um, the, uh, reaction paper, uh, uh video. 
And that specifically talks about the Rampart scandal. And there's so much more to uh, what happened in Rampart, um, which is a, a division in uh, Los Angeles. Um, the LAPD had this group um, unit in Rampart, the crash unit, um, as you're you're now aware. And uh, the officer that we um, in the video that we watched was just one part of a significant um, corruption ring in the Rampart area. And you can find a lot more documentaries about um, what happened specifically, just specifically in that scandal. Um, but as you can imagine, there are um, police officers who have committed crimes in 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 many different areas. LAPD seemed to have um, a really rough time uh, in the 1990s, um, but it, it really interesting if you get a chance to watch uh, any of the, um, just go onto YouTube and, and look for uh, Rampart um, uh, corruption. Uh, there's tons of documentaries about it. Really interesting um, and very sad. Um, but, Again, even the Keith Foster story was, is pretty pretty brutal. Um, so yes, there are a lot of criminal cops as well. Cost of corruption, financially, uh, are, are overwhelming. Um, but again, and so are the, the costs of the relationships between the communities and the police. Um, overall, uh, if I had to ask you right now, do you think that the communities in general trust the police? I'm going to guess that probably half of you would say, no, I don't think most communities trust their police departments. Um, and it, it's from some of the, uh, you know, quote unquote, bad apples um, or and these really salacious cases where uh, police officers did things that are just so out of control that you can't believe they did these. Um, People also uh, file lawsuits, of course, against the officers who do these things, and they cost millions and millions of dollars. Um, are these lawsuits a deterrent? There's no evidence to prove that. So there are some explanations as to why police officers do these horrible things. Uh, the rotten apple argument, um, maybe the officer was deviant before he was hired, um, or um, the development of a police personality, the officer became deviant after hiring. And that would be kind of probably more like what we what we saw in the video of the officer uh, in Rampart. Um, but the possible predictors, gender, age, education, race, military experience, ac academy performance, and prior history of wrongdoing. So we do see that college educated officers are less likely to be terminated. Um, and honestly, I'm gonna you are you're gonna hear this from me uh, more often than not. I strongly believe that police officers should have a four year degree. I, I really do. Um, some of you would probably disagree with that. Um, that just happens to be my belief. I worked um, for a few years with two different officers, uh, a few years each. Both of them had college degrees, and both of them were top notch officers. Um, did those two things have anything to do with each other? I don't know, but um, I, personally, I, I think a four-year degree is um, something that police agencies should require. I think they would have fewer problems, not because a college degree makes people smarter, but because the officers have invested more in their future by having to go to school for a lot longer. And, you know, it, it's, anyways, they also get the opportunity to, um, experience more in life. Okay, uh, women are also less likely to be terminated uh, while on uh, while during their probation. Uh, younger officers were more likely to be terminated. Blacks, but not other minorities, were more likely to be terminated. And those who had prior negative employment histories, like a dishonorable discharge, or who did poorly in the academy, were more likely to be terminated for misconduct. Um, of course, uh, PTSD, unfortunately, is something that um, is something uh, that was a factor in a lot of the officers who did not perform well, um, witnessing the death of a friend or a partner, uh, accidentally killing or wounding a bystander, failing to stop a perpetrator, killing or wounding a child or teenager, 
viewing the body of a child or victim, interacting with a grieving family, feeling caught in a violent riot, viewing bloody or gruesome scenes, observing an event or violent murder, being undercover and constantly on guard, or being threatened by suspects. So these are individual explanations of how officers sometimes have turned corrupt. Uh, organizational explanations. So uh, uh, these are other reasons why people might have uh, turned corrupt. And societal explanations. Um, public doesn't comply with the law, so the officers basically say, why, why should we bother? The, they're not going to change. The public's not going to change, so why should we bother enforcing it? Or if the public, um, public env engages in illegal activities, we might as well do the same. Or if the public believes crime control is more important than due process, the police just are going to act on that message and do what they have to do to enforce the law. So how do we reduce police corruption? Increase pay. Eliminate unenforceable laws. A lot of our drug law, California especially, we have a lot of laws right now that are very unenforceable. Most of our misdemeanors are unenforceable. The officers will uh, take people down to the county jail and the uh, inmates are out of the jail before the officer is done with the paperwork. Uh, establish civilian review boards. Uh, we do have that in Fresno. Uh, improve training. This is that's kind of a must. Uh, set realistic goals. Provide ethical leadership. Absolutely. Perform audits. Have financial disclosure rules. Provide written code of ethics and provide whistleblowing procedures. Improve internal affairs. Rotate staff in some positions. Uh, better evidence handling procedures. That's uh, a big problem in some areas. Early warning systems, use video cameras in patrol cars, use covert high-tech surveillance, targeted randomized integrity testing, conduct surveys of police and the public, and decriminalize vice crimes. So how do you get rid of the rotten apples? Improve screening. Background checks, which they already do. Interviews, which they already do. Credit checks, which they already do. And drug tests, which they already do. Um, the MMPI is the most common, um, that's that Minnesota multiphasic personality inventory tool is the one that's usually used during your psyche eval. Um, the so-called big five are the extrovert, neuro, neuroticism, <laughs> agreeableness, conscientiousness, and openness. Um, and then conscientiousness seem to be the most relevant to job performance. Oh, so these are more things. Again, training, 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 and training. Higher formal education standards are not the key to ethical behavior, but academy, um, more academy and more in-service training is recommended. Mm -hmm. This is kind of controversial in that they recommend integrity testing. And... How can, let's see, they're recommending more training, but do you think integrity and morals and ethics are things that you can be trained to do? Hmm, I don't know. I mean, I kind of think you have morals or you don't. Maybe I'm wrong. What do you guys think? I don't know. But a lot of officers don't want to have uh, in integrity testing. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, officers and, their un and the police unions are probably very against these early warning and audit systems. But the agencies and the police departments themselves need to be looking out for complaints with use of force. Uh, use of weapons reports, reprimands, and all this kind of stuff. If you have an officer who's been on the job for eight months and he already has complaints, something needs to be done. Additional training, counseling, reassignment, transfer, evaluations, and or dismissal. The hard part is there's a very strong union, which is great for the officers, but it's hard for uh, the departments. 
the union will stand up and keep the department from hiring, uh, sorry, from firing these officers. So um, body cameras are something that's um, very, they're used very widely now. Um, Fresno Police Department started using the body cameras when I was at probation. And I, I remember because my um, my partner uh, at Hoover was was in the first group to get the body cameras. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, that's so weird. And body cameras are a great idea. <laughs> but let me tell you, he turned it on and he could turn it on and off whenever he wanted to. So I'm thinking, well, what's the use of this body camera if the officer can turn it on and off whenever he wants? Right? Because it, so why is that? Well, because does he not have a right to privacy? Right? Does he not have a chance to go to the bathroom by himself? without having to take all of his gear off. Okay, so there was a reason why. So that kind of made then that made sense to me. I was like, oh, well, that makes sense. He's like, well, they can't have this thing on me all the time and then not let me go to the bathroom. And I was like, oh, well, that makes sense. So anyways, so there's a lot more to that, that argument as well. So <clears throat> they also argue that there should be a public database for bad cops so that they don't leave one agency and then just move to another county, state, whatever, and get hired with another one. I don't know that this has happened yet. I don't believe it has. There are, have also been, uh, there's also been a movement to um, basically take away protection from police officers so that they can be sued for their, um, behaviors while on the job. Um, so civil rights cases against police officers are rare, but um, they are becoming more common now. And that's what we're talking about with the consent decree. Decree. Uh, decree. <laughs> consent decree. So discussion questions and we are done.